Thank you for your patience, everyone. Uh, so next on the agenda, uh, Mr. Simone. And I see you have Bob Cantwell here with you as well, so we'll turn it over to you. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. My name is Bob Cantwell. I'm with BME Associates. I'm here tonight on behalf of Mr. Simone, um, who is the owner of uh, the, the, the subject piece of property, uh, which is number 4740 Lake Road, uh, just north of the, uh, the Four Corners. Um, the, um, we certainly uh, appreciate the opportunity to um, attend tonight's meeting, workshop meetings, simply to present a conceptual plan uh, for, uh, as, a, as a development option, uh, for the residential development of Mr. Simone's uh, half acre uh, piece of property. Again, that is um, just to the north of the Brockport Corners Mall, uh, it actually abuts that. And just, uh, it also has frontage on Crestview Drive, as well as um, to, the, to the west, uh, frontage on Lake Road. Um, what um, I had uh, distributed to the, uh, to the board was simply a concept plan showing uh, six proposed residential townhomes. Um, and I'll kind of cover, cover that in a couple seconds here. Um, the other second, second page um, that, uh, that we distributed was the previous uh, development plan application that was um, presented to the town uh, approximately a year ago, and that was for a commercial, uh, a proposed commercial building, uh, as well as a uh, parking lot to support uh, that, that commercial site. Um, with this development application, Mr. Simone simply is, is uh, proposing the development on his property, so we're not including the adjacent land that was part of that rezoning request, uh, again, a year ago. Um, the current, current uh, zoning on the property is R12S. Um, that allows for sing single-family dwellings on, on minimum lot size of 15,000 square feet. Um, the site, uh, as I mentioned, is immediately adjacent to Brockport Corners Mall. It also is, um, is adjacent to the, uh, to the west of the subject site to an existing structure that is on that, uh, that adjacent piece of property. Uh, the proposed use would require rezoning to uh, multiple dwelling uh, MR1 uh, zoning district to allow for the residential townhomes. Um, as um, I would suspect uh, a number of the board members would recall, uh, the town's current comp, comp plan um, actually identifies this specific piece of property uh, to be rezoned from the current zoning to the B1 uh, retail commercial. Uh, that's, that was um, what was proposed again a year ago. Um, <coughs> For uh, for that pro the property um, that was also um, at the at the time it was actually the rezoning was denied by the town board um, uh, based on um, as I understand it uh, opposition to the proposed use um, the. Um, <coughs> The current proposal, as I mentioned, only includes Mr. Simone's property, um, and uh, under the multiple residence district, um, it allows for up to 12 units per acre. So with his half acre of uh, total land, um, we are proposing six 
uh, townhomes. Um, the um, additional, uh, in addition to the, the density requirements, um, this proposed concept plan does comply with uh, setbacks that are required within the multiple residence uh, district. Um, and, um, and, and with regard to the concept plan, um, the access would be directly onto Crestview Drive as opposed to any access onto Lake Road. Um, I would also reference the uh, most recent comp plan, which included um, a number of references within the housing and residential land use uh, portion of the comp plan that um, that uh, uh, housing diversity is a is a required or is a desired um, uh, goal and policy for new development, um, which essentially stated uh, uh, a variety of housing is is uh, is rec recommended in order to meet the diverse needs of the community. That's a quote out of the comp plan. Um, the applicant feels um, as though the current proposal is an excellent approach to the transitional nature of the zoning of the uh, commercial site to the to the south um, and uh, to the northern um, on the northern side of Crestview Drive, which is again not only zoned single-family uh, residential use, but is also um, most of the uses uh, are single-family homes in that portion of the. Uh, uh, the neighborhood. Um, we have uh, certainly not not considered any specific um, uh, architectural elevations or footprints per se at this point in the process. Uh, tonight's uh, purpose again is simply to get uh, feedback from the board as to whether um, whether this um, makes sense from the standpoint of um, consideration to move forward with a rezoning. Um, we are, have simply shown schematic footprint of, uh, of townhomes um, that could, could certainly evolve uh, once Mr. Simone uh, does get to the point where, um, where we would look at architecture and working with an architect and things of that nature. Um, we have shown schematically um, landscape treatment of street trees along Lake Road and Crestview Drive, um, as well as likely um, some screening and buffering along the south property line uh, adjacent to the existing commercial site. So uh, with that, I would be happy to answer any questions of the board. Um, certainly, again, our, our, our intent this evening is simply to you know, get some feedback from you know, from, from the town board and, and, uh, and go from there. Before you open that up, I would like to say a few words. Yeah. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the board, town supervisor, for uh, hearing us this evening. Um, we brought the plans. I sat down with, uh, with Bob and brought forward this plan after a discussion that we had uh, with uh, Kevin Johnson. Uh, looking at other options also, one of the, one of the options that uh, came to mind was uh, the Anthony House in Gates, which is a residential property. And it's a home for autism, uh, children or adults with autism. And currently there's, uh, I believe there's like four adults in the home. Uh, I believe that that would probably be my uh, shortest and easiest route because I, I don't believe I would have to go in for any approvals. Uh, the only thing I would need is maybe a use variance. Uh, my heart and uh, my experience in real estate leads me to still believe that commercial office building is the best use for that property. And I can hear the complaints. I've heard multiple complaints about it, about, you know, uh, the uh, uh, vacancies that we have in current commercial use, uh, you know, drug need or, you know, uh, 
drug paraphernalia being found in the parking lot. But, you know, none of that. It's all concerns that a lot of the constituents have. And these are concerns that that you're going to find no matter what goes in on that piece of property. The only concern that I think is uh, vital is the concern that people have regarding travel. And that uh, traffic issue could be addressed also. But, um, if you look at the current property, you look at what's next door to me in the, uh, in the plaza, it's a better match than, uh, than multifamily or residential. But we, uh, we got turned down for the commercial use, and uh, this is, I guess, the only options I have now are multifamily or residential. Um, it would dress up, I think, by putting a beautiful commercial building in there, would dress up that corner considerably. Um, the property to the rear of my property is residential, but it's uh, it needs a considerable amount of work. Yeah. So, I, just to reiterate, I, I think my choices would be first commercial, second multifamily like we have here, and third uh, of residential housing for lots of children out there. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Bell. Mm -hmm. Bob, does this contemplate the acquisition of the Dempsey property in Mexico. No, it doesn't. What is the purpose of the second map of these two? That's, that's the application that was presented as the rezoning a year or so Previously. ago. Yeah. Yes. So, so just we just included that okay. as a comparison for the board. Yeah. 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 Right. yeah, sorry for that. Bedrooms, square footage. What are, what are the proposed solutions? How many bedrooms? I've got that mark. We haven't got that far. I think we're talking about two, two bedroom, right? That would be fairly typical these these days. But I think again, just to reiterate the, the the architecture of the units, we have to work work itself through and you know, come up with a plan that has the right square footage and design. It looks like the space. <clears throat> the space is 45 feet by 120 feet. The entire space. Um, oh, okay, gotcha. I, I made a mistake. I was just superimposing. Yeah, the, the, again, the second sheet was the previous plan, just as a reference. Mr. Simone and I met, well, let's say it would be a month or two ago. Uh, he asked for some time in the office. I think it must have been before Mr. Cantwell was on board. He came, he expressed some frustration over this parcel and the fact that he feels his hands are a bit tied. And, uh, his request was, what can he make work here? And I said, well, we're four to five. I, you know, I don't know. So I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, but perhaps it's fair to say that what you're asking for here is some direction from the board. You've, you're talking either a, a home for those with some developmental disabilities. Potentially, you think that might be, presumably because it'd be a building with a larger footprint, so it would use the parcel Correct. more than a single family home would. Or potentially a multifamily. Option two, option three would be your request from last year which three, three of the board members here were here for that, two of us were not, but uh, so the really, it's fair to say you, you're presenting the board sort of three options and you're looking for some direction? Yes, uh, and the problem we had was back last year when, when the board voted, voted on it, we never did get a true answer as to why it was t totally turned out. And I believe probably the majority of it was the constituents 
we're against it, but again, if you go back and look at the reasoning behind why they, they spoke out, I had that no matter what plan goes in. And I didn't want to waste my money anymore. You know, either I get something in there, or maybe, how many years? Or maybe those you constituents. For, what, 25 years? 20, 20 years? Probably a good 20, 18, 20. And I have to say, I know Mr. Savar, that lot has always been well maintained, garbage picked up, mowed, and everything. And I would like to see something go on it. You know, just something that will fit because. It is a half acre parcel and uh, uh, years ago how it came to be this vacant parcel was Mr. Dallinger decided he was going to park cars over there and didn't have any permission and he removed the house and since then it's been sitting vacant. That goes back into the 70s so it's a, it's a long period of time. Mm -hmm. but, uh, well and it is no man's land in a sense. You're right between the residential and the commercial, and so it's a tough parcel to develop mostly in a way that satisfies people. Right, mostly toward the commercial end, though. Look at that corner and the comprehensive plan. You know, what do you do? You abolish the comprehensive plan and go back? I think, again, I think it's perfect fit for commercial. Anybody in real estate will tell you the same thing, but when you get the kind of complaints that you were getting from the neighbors, and this board heard it. Uh, not my backyard. Yeah, when, if I could just interject too, when Sam came in, um, when we started to do the research and reference the comp plan, not only was there a future land use that you know oftentimes makes recommendations generically, but they specifically, in the comp plan, called out for this, this parcel itself. Um, to have been rezoned to commercial, so it, it was it was very um, very interesting that, that that was the you know the the recommendation of of the comp plan and the future land use. Um, the other thing I just wanted to mention: it's also very unusual for for a parcel to have um, an access uh, signal uh, signalized intersection, you know, right right at the intersection of Crestview and and, and Lake Road as well for you know, for the neighborhood um, that's that's adjacent there. Um, so, I mean, from a from a traffic standpoint, whatever the use is, you know, you've got a pretty good opportunity to get in and out of the you know the pro property site, project site. So, um, Any other questions from the board? Like some time to consider this, maybe put it on a workshop in the weeks and months to come. Uh, and Mr. Simone will do our best, and Mr. Campbell, to let you know when, when it'll be on the workshop agenda again. Yeah, give us it, time to absorb it and think it through. And if if there is additional insight or input, you know that. And again, I I was not a part of the input that you heard from the public. A year or so ago, so you know, I don't, I don't know what, whether there was specific concerns that could be addressed, whether it's you know aesthetics or access or or whatever. So if there's things that you know the the board members that were a part of the you know the presentation and the review um, that that would be helpful for us to comment on, and please feel free to you know, send send them our way. Okay. I don't think there was any aesthetic issues to my knowledge. I mean if there was aesthetic issues, there's aesthetic issues there now. When you look at that corner, you know, they got signs up on the on the mall side um, that in my estimation I would I would put up trees and block that. Um, as far as the property to the rear of me he's willing to sell it and I was willing to buy it. I mean, Make it, make it better, make it more aesthetic, uh, pleasing. But so, are you indicating that with the screening you intend to put in, that it would make the 
property more presentable for those using and living, using Crestview and living there? Is that what you're, you're saying? Absolutely. Well, and I, I think, because I've heard too, and in fact, I was here the night of the hearing, so I remember that last year that um, I heard there was a comment or two made about, well, it's nice to have extra green space, but that's not, you know, it's interesting because that's not really the best spot to have green space. I don't think I've ever seen anybody throwing a football or having a soccer game out there. I'd be willing to offer it up to the town too to buy it from me and put a plate rod in. You could have all kinds of green space. Take your donation to the town, is that what you're saying? No. Um, well, thank you for the offer. I don't know what we'll pick you up on that one, but. Um, all right, then I think, uh, in, like I said, in the months to come, we'll try to let you know when we're going to have it back on the agenda. Okay. Okay, and we'll give us some time to digest it, think it through. Anything else? Thank you very uh, much. Thank you very much. You know what, may I ask one more question? This whole question of deed restrictions, has that been thoroughly flushed out? What did, well, hey, Mr. Kelly. I, 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 I am only speaking from memory, so I, I could be incorrect in my recollection of what uh, I researched out in the title earlier this year, but the answer to that question may differ um, from the Dempsey parcel to the Simone parcel. I see. Um, but I, and I think the answer to that question could also be subject to conjecture, because you can't just think of it in terms of the, um, of the residential property east of that, but you also have to think about it in terms potentially of, um, of, of any restrictions uh, of the properties north to I, I'm speaking completely from memory, and I, I would have to really dig back into my research. I, I don't know if Mr. Simone could maybe comment on that too. Just reading some of the meeting minutes, it, it seemed as though because of the fact that there was two parcels, in order for the town board, perhaps, and I'm just speculating, Sam can correct me, that in order for the for this building, which kind of straddled that property line, it's almost like you would have had to dissolve the property line before you could consider doing a, a building on the combination of the two lots. So, and I don't know whether that's you know what happened at that point, but well, I think the deed restrictions that um, uh, the supervisor was asking about relate to uh, the chain of title for this piece of property that goes back from my recollection, maybe 75 years or more. Correct. Okay. Back to the initial farm in subdivisions. So right. when the, and the deed restrictions like that run with the land, in my experience, and just in professionally has been, even those those parcels across from the, uh, I always call it Ames Plaza, because that's what it was when I was growing up, whatever it is now. Bar not bargain out, but either. Harbor it's Freight, built. the Harbor Big Freight Plaza, mm -hmm. all those houses there, Every one of them is subject to deed restrictions, the Sweden Hill subdivision, and you can't do anything with those parcels except to have a single family residence. So that to me would seem to be a preliminary issue to even going down this road. Because if you're deed restricted, we can rezone this property heavy industrial, and you can't do anything other than put a single family house on there. The thing is, I had uh, two attorneys look at it. Okay. And they both told me that. They would they would fight it that it was so went so far back the people that that had those deed restrictions put in place are no longer alive and they were telling me that that could easily be taken out okay. if that were the case I don't know that's an interesting you know, you have 400 property owners immediately adjacent <laughs> you have a different opinion I hear it. I hear it. so. Okay, well, I just, that's, uh, I would only recommend that maybe that could get fleshed out because it may be that no matter what we do, we can't help you. But I'll let the attorneys deal with that. Okay, so we'll let you know when it's back. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, we're going to move on to Mr. Strabel. And the planning question. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you. Pictures, yeah, the pictures come out black, okay. mm -hmm. but it's it's hunter yeah. green. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. And so I'm, I'll, I'll just specify the same color, and, and obviously my hand coloring, you know, the color pencils here is just light because I was using the real color and it looked black. Right. <laughs> so. so we marveled at your that this is done by hand. It's, it's yeah, I wouldn't remarkably cool. So a couple of the questions that I do have is. Um, there's a few man doors that I, I would suggest that we paint them because they're still just factory primed. <laughs> and if I'm going to use the green for the trim colors, I would just suggest that the man, the couple of exit man doors out of the gym that we paint hunter green also. Mm -hmm. um, and then those man doors have currently have some very old lights over them that I would also suggest now's the time to put an LED light over them so I'll, I'll swap that out. The um, other thing that I wanted to point out is there's two other canopies on the building that are still tongue and groove, v grooved um, and, and flaking pine uh, fascia boards on them. And, if you want, now would be the time that I end up using the same green vertical skin it. skin it now and just be done with it. The one is by the fitness center, right? That's one is yeah. One is the small one by the fitness center that you just put the motor operated door. The other is the back exit. Well, the north side oh, yeah, yeah. from the lobby mm -hmm. that nobody really uses in the winter because except for Slayer in Slayer. the summer. Yeah, I suppose you know. But they're wood now. They're, they started out stained. They've been painted. They need something. And I just thought, well, instead of painting them or whatever, why don't we just put the green metal in? So, um, yeah, and then, like I said, there were a couple of doors that are still just gray primed that they never were painted. And this, I would say, let's paint them. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. All right. Now, the other thing was, that I hadn't caught until I got up on the roof was the ladder from the, the lower roof to the upper roof. What you see up here on the upper roof is because the current parapet um, cornice lines jumps out two inches, the ladder rungs are right up against it. So you can't use the ladder unless you were to do this 
those last five steps. So what's been going on is people have obviously been doing it with steel-toed shoes and punching their shoe through the wall so that they could actually stand on the rung of the ladder. So obviously I need to rebuild this ladder because it makes no sense right now. It'll make even less sense when I put more cladding and come out a little bit further because now I'm beyond the ladder. So I got that, that's another little detail well, that, that I got to throw. It's got to be a major safety issue that, oh, that you can't is. use the last five rungs of the ladder. Uh, you currently can now because there's three inch holes at each one. <laughs> Great. <laughs> so, so that I, I also want to address, and I'll take care of that on the drawing. Um, so then that gives me to, if you guys make a resolution at the next board meeting to put this out on the street, which your legal advertisement thing goes in the weekend paper of the suburban news, so that would put you at um, uh, boy, the next board meeting about the 11th, right? So then that was the 17th or something like that. So to be out legally for three weeks, it's going to be out to bid during Christmas, which is kind of an awkward time because that, that week's kind of dead. So anyways, that would bring us back to something like, uh, I'm not going to be able to make your first board meeting because I think that's in January 8th. Second? Oh. So it's not the second and fourth? Oh, okay. Not for the first one in January, the organization. Right. Yeah, January 2nd, 16th. Wednesday, 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 W
Right, I understand that part, but has the cost, do you think the price of steel has increased again since I the have, original? I yeah. haven't checked it. Okay, since. all right. Okay, let's get a word for everybody. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I'm glad to be to this point. Yes, for sure. Reasonably, if we have a vote on the 22nd, how quickly do you think they'll begin work, Dave? The metal, if you get a contract by the February, because you still got to get the insurance forms in the contract and you sign the contract right. and all that. Um, we get the metal ordered, I think it was eight weeks out for the metal. So a couple months before the metal shows up. There's no use them starting anything it's until the metals, May, May, June, which makes sense because then it puts you in, yeah, it, April, May, May ish would be about the right time anyway. And then, if I recollect, this type of uh, cancellation, <coughs> installation, whatever you want to mm -hmm. call it, is pretty uh, specialized. It's not every contractor is probably going to fit at it or. Uh, yeah, work, it's, it's, the metal, it's the metal building contractors yeah. that have been in it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's one in Perry that does a lot of it. Mark, um, yeah, not Mark Orr, I'm mixing that name up. Yeah, I think it is Mark Orr. And, um, like, they did all the LaFroy, 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 Lafroy stuff out there on Henrietta and Town Line Road. And, you know, so they do a lot of that stuff. Actually, I believe they're the ones that put the roof on the highway garage. Um, so that's 25 years old now at least. <laughs> Have you ha had any problems with that? No. Because those were a few things that I think we talked about the last time too. There's the roof on this building. You know, it was a 20-year warranted roof. It's 19 years. So in the next five years, and, and you know there have been issues up there. A few of them might have been repaired because they didn't realize that they had a warranty and you know, the warranty had come up, but a few of the recent repairs that were up there were non-warranted type repairs because it was damage that was caused by things flying across the roof that weren't warrantable. <laughs> so, um, but that and this roof here, I did this one was a 25-year roof that's probably pushing that time frame too. So those so do are you things. Don't, don't depress us at all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's that? Don't depress us tonight. Well, yeah, roofs aren't real <laughs> impressive, anyways. <laughs> it's a lot of money. Unless you're yeah. flying over. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you, David. Uh, the building fee adjustments. Everybody get the email came from Phyllis today with yes. a couple of items in there. I don't have any concerns unless any of you do. No concerns from me. Okay. So organizational meeting. We'll pass those. Uh, I think here, uh, here we talked all week about having the website on tonight and I forgot it on the, on the agenda. So the website items, did everybody receive the three different quotes we have? Pinpoint Group, Bash Solutions, and then Scenic View? Mm -hmm. yes. Lisa emailed them out again today, or last week it was. <clears throat> so just to set the table again, the Scenic View is our current provider. Uh, his, his the quote is the least in terms of cost, um, but I think we all have a sense of the type of site we'll end up with in a situation like this. Um, and I think in terms of the redesign work we're talking about, it's a little bit, we're looking for a little bit more enhanced of a look and feel for the website. So the other two, Bash and Pinpoint. Um, Pinpoint Group, who was in that meeting? Lisa, it was you, Karen maybe? Were you with Pinpoint, the folks from Le Leroy or? Virgin. 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 <coughs> um, so they were the ones that uh, we just got the quote this past week. That's probably the highest 
in terms of the quote. I think that the work quality based on the sample sites that they sent, very, very similar probably to the, the BASH solutions, which is the second one. Laura, you participated in that meeting with Mr. BASH. Um, that's what, another $3,000 or so in excess. So the pinpoint group is the most expensive one, and then BASH is somewhere in between, I think, in the $9,000 range. $8,500. Both of the quotes, as I reviewed them, include new, uh, well, either working with us, Lori, with your pictures and, and sort of your storehouse of items, as well as some photo time, should we need that. Um, and the back end on these sites would allow us to really do a lot of the work and the updating ourselves, whereas with Scenic View, it would be all as it currently is, we send everything to the current web provider and he has to update it. Well, that's a problem for us because we send an agenda or that sort of thing. It may not get on until after the meeting has happened. And I think we really need to be able to control the content. And both Pinpoint and Bash, both of their websites, um, I forget the name. Oh, gosh. Sorry. Just want to occur to me. But basically, I think it's the CMS, Content Management System, maybe. But we are able to control and to change pretty much everything on the site, other than the entire structure of it. So if you want to make structural changes, you've got to bring in somebody to do that. But if you want to change pictures, you want to change text, you want to add things, it's all fine and data. We do that ourselves. It's simply. So I think apples to apples, bash, and pinpoint are really the most akin to what we're looking for, and they're both going to provide us with exactly what we asked for. So I think um, of the two bashes, the less costly of that. So. Did we get references, yeah. Kevin, or, or samples? <coughs> Did you say you talked to them about sample websites they provided? Are those listed in these? I don't see Absolutely. them. Correct. So I sent the bash, bash ones out when we... Bash, when we, we did we, see some stuff. Yeah, and I sent that out to video. everybody. Right. There's a video, too. Um, I sent that out right after we talked about the bash quote originally. Gosh, it's probably two months ago. But I can I, I can look that up again. I'll send it. And how about pinpoint? I don't see. The we just got this quote. We've been waiting a bit for this one, so I don't think they sent us any samples. Well, the village nine. Um, That's true. The village backward website. Oh, show the sample time. And if, if we weren't in on those meetings, we don't know. It right. <laughs> so the village of Brackford. The village has a nice website on this before. Okay, if we can just get those before yep. next week, then that would be great. Okay, so I'll send those sample sites for pinpoint and bash. So in, in terms of that, so that's of course going on the assumption that all things, all other things being equal, you know, in terms of the quality of the sites, are we okay going with the less costly of the two? I mean, I guess, does anybody want to continue with our current provider? So huh? I get the sense no. we want to, we, it's okay. So we're really left with the two others, and the one is less costly than the other by about a third. Lisa, were you at both? Both presentations, do you have any feeling based on what you saw? I was only at the one. I, I liked the bash better. Okay. Yeah, okay. Just seeing it views up. Proposals a little lacking. Well, on and top of the uh, already having an impression from our current website, I find that a little bit telling. So, well, if you look at the ongoing cost too, I believe the web hosting is more costly with Pinpoint as well. Let me look here. So, if you go to the page six of the Bash proposal and page nine of the Pinpoint, the web hosting with Bash is twenty dollars a month, whereas with Pinpoint, it's thirty dollars a month. Mm -hmm. So, it's not back breaking, but certainly it's some additional cost. Uh huh. And if you look too, oh, go ahead. They're both 
very thorough in what they gave us, I will say that. I agree. Then if you look at that same page on the pinpoints, you've got the photography services are extra, so a 312.50, so that adds another you know, 312 bucks. On the pinpoint, if you're going to need some photography, whereas on the bash proposal, it's included yeah. as part of the 8500. So you're looking at 11.5 versus 8,500 for, I've looked at both websites. I think Pinpoint has more experience with municipal sites. Uh -huh. At the same time, Bash, they showed us some school district sites and a lot of things that are akin to what we do. So well, I don't know. He was very receptive to, to us. So I think that if we have some good input, they can produce the other thing, too, just having sat in both presentations, uh, Mr. Tanner at Pinpoint, they, so they're actually an IT company, and they have somebody that they subcontract the web design through, so it's not something that they really do. Per se, well, they, they do it, but they have to offer it through a subcontractor, whereas with Bash, that is, web design is exactly what they do. So that was a bit, because she was not at the meeting. Yeah. So we started asking some questions, like, well, I know, we'd, I'd have to defer to Amanda, I forget her name, Amanda, Amanda or something. Allen. So it, it is not really the purpose, because I think they handle, for instance, with the village, they would do their IT and their website. So probably the village had them with their IT and said, hey, we can do the website too. So it seems it's not really as much a focus for them as it is for BASH, which that is their primary. So I'll send the sample sites by email, and then um, maybe perhaps we could talk about this by email. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we'll prepare a resolution for next week. Okay. Get that rolling. Mr. Bash has been calling up every week. Since we, <laughs> we have any news? We have any news? So, all right. But I think follow-up is important. And it did take us a while to get the other quotes. So that was okay, we'll move on next to the splash pad. Mr. Musebeck. Well, last week we had a meeting uh, with Joe Denz. Oh, let me just go back a little bit. We discussed the two presentations. Uh, <coughs> and. <coughs> Are you talking that the foundation discussed? No. Oh. Are we we discussed yeah, okay. both the present when I'm speaking now I'm speaking to town board now okay. foundation uh, you know foundation doesn't make any uh, choices it's strictly our our decision on which uh, company we're going to go with as far as this the splash pad uh, spray park goes and uh, when we that the last time we. It quotes, and you do that to quotes, you can pass them off. Do you have both, yes. both sides? Yes. Yeah. Take one of each, those are the bigger models. So if you remember, but one thing, you might have been interrupt, interrupt for one second, Bob. The reason I didn't ask Lisa to grab the financial info on the smaller projects is if you remember, I mentioned this, and I think Mr. Denzay. Confirm. Okay. The, the majority of the cost of this project is under, the stuff underground and the site work. So the idea is when you get to the top end, you get it in the ground, the extra money you're talking is really all in the features that are really the whole point of everything. Anyway, and so to go from, I think the other quote was 195 or that range to two. 30-ish, that additional 30 is almost all in features above the ground, which really provide the experience for those using it. So I asked Bob if you would address the, the larger quote, yeah. because we've already got 160 and hopefully some more on the way if Wayne can twist it up. With, uh, with, with the two larger quotes, uh, Vortex came in at uh, 232, 990, and the proposal from uh, Frazier came in at 229 971.13. But there's a difference. Everything is inclusive 
with Mr. Densek's. Uh, the stone activation, the materials is all included in Densex. And uh, it's not with Mr. Frazier's. Uh, and we got an approximation from uh, Brian of around 15 grand. So with that being said, we would be around 244,000 and change with Mr. Frazier's uh, uh, proposal versus uh, 232,000, uh, 232.9 uh, with uh, Mr. Densex. Uh, they also set this aside. Uh, when we met uh, Jim Oberst, uh, Adam, and, and uh, uh, Brian, Lisa and Jim Oberst, myself, we met and Mr. Denzek was on the telephone with his installer answering a lot of questions. And uh, there's a little uh, difference as far as because of elevations of how we're going to properly drain it. Correct, Brent? Correct. And uh, I've got some pictures here that I'll pass over. I just got one. Here. Just I've got the pictures too. Yeah, you guys have to share that one. Here. These are uh, over in the town of uh, Gates, right, Brian? In China. Or China. 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 Yeah. yeah. And they had the same problem that we're being confronted with once we got Jim Over's uh, elevations and such. Uh, they have the main drain where it is to go out underground. Our elevations are incorrect. Is that correct? We just don't have enough, yeah. enough fall. So yeah. Uh, the main drain from the, the bottom of the bowl to the bottom of the drain is a roughly three foot elevation difference. But then that water has to drain through another two feet of filtration, sand to meet the health department specs. So you get a five foot elevation difference, um, which we don't really have to be able to do that. So in lieu of that, instead of funneling down to the center of the bowl, it's just gonna sheet drain across the splash pad into this bio swale, which will drop two feet down, filter through all the sand, and then it'll exit out into the storm system. If you, if you look on the one picture, uh, you'll see uh, this sheet drain is at the, at the left side, and then your, uh, uh, then it drains into this, drain, pardon me? Does the sheet drain cost more? No, it's, it's all it's, yeah. all it's yeah. But then we have a vegetated area that it's going to dissipate the chlorine, right? I'm not a, yeah, it filters out all Filters out before it. Chlorine contaminants, doesn't think about that. And, and, and with this, uh, it also gives us a buffer zone. Lisa's going to get the overhead, uh, where we had concerns about fencing nationally. But we also had concerns with young children. And this is going to help us with another buffer zone between the roadway and the edge of it. And, uh, Presumably, we'll pick some better plantings than China yeah. did. And yeah. It's just sort of overgrown. You know, whatever we, I suppose, that we can use. Something with full sun, get a lot of sun. Brian, do you want to maybe point out what yeah. you're talking about? The boards, we can see this. Here, I'll be your van of white. <laughs> 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 Oh, you have the elevations. That's even better. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's see this. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see this. Yeah. So obviously there's a playground that was installed. Yeah. Splash pads right here. So this, I guess, oval-looking area here, that's the bioswale. Okay. So everything from the pit splash pad. Will pitch across the pad and filter down into the bio soil. And then it'll exit out. How far are we and the edge of the bio swell are we from the woods? We're not. We're turning the other road. road. Yeah, the road. The road, well, we're the road, road is right here. There are no woods right there. Yeah, so the new playground here, between the new playground and the road, is where the. Oh, I see what you're yeah. saying. Oh, I got it. I got it. And then it's seeded with a rain garden mix. 
that's the that kind of looks not tropical, but it doesn't look like cattails. It's kind of maybe nice tropical stuff. out there now. Yeah. yeah. But that'll get a lot of sun. It'll be good. Alright. Yeah, so the whole thing will sort of be pitched instead of all draining with a bolt in the middle. So that's that's all we can do because of the elevations and it's commonly done as uh, we've got. Yeah, and what town was it that has that? China. And they've had no issues with their drainage? So it's right here. Though. So here's the snack bar, the big one. Mm -hmm. The new playground is where these volleyball courts used to be. So it'll be right in this area. Here. Okay, I and So it'll drain awesome. just by gravity running yeah, yeah. into this. Which is a current ditch and it runs down through a culvert and eventually in the pond, right? Correct. And then we pump the pond and irrigate the fields. Correct. It's a beautiful. And, and it's it's along with the water. meeting, uh, Mr. Denzik gave us some better sketches and stuff. And uh, Supervisor Johnson's concerns were because of uh, uh, the uh, makeup of his family is toddlers, adults. How is the configuration of the spray park going to be done? And lo and behold, uh, we've got a toddler's area, we've got a family area, uh, we've also got a teen area. So it's strategically designed. So I'll pass it over. Because the one thing on the Fraser design, there was this thing called the, um, what was it called? Water table. Yeah. It had sort of four different sections on it, so a lot of little kids could be around it. So I asked them to bring that up to the Denzags, and so what they pointed out is that this, this area is designed for toddlers. This is for family, and then this section here is for teens. So you hopefully... The toddlers are okay but, you, but, over. Exactly. but you know that, that people way. are going to go all over. Oh, sure. Oh, of course. But I think the, but you're they're going to be drawn to the things that they really yeah. like. Now, whether we get teens that will do this, yeah, I don't know. You can see know, some of the little kids. Mm -hmm. Well, you don't, I don't think the teens are going to be playing on this stuff. They're no. going to want to be over here by this. And vice versa. The little kids are going to be getting all the water in the face over here, so they'll be over here. So oh. Remember we went to Greece, the first thing was in the elevator or something, big sign. Don't climb on it. We were in there 30 seconds. Kids were climbing all over this stuff. Yeah. Thank That's you. Uh, yeah. um, now, I remember when they gave the proposal, the gentleman from the Minnesota company, mm -hmm. they, with a price, they had somebody that would work with Todd and Roger. Correct. This is included, someone that will then teach they, them how to. They said they don't charge extra for that. They'll okay. be here and they'll yes. do all of that. Oh. Frankly, I think we've had a tremendous experience with them on the playground. Uh, they just finished putting up the swings today. No, despite the weather. weather. Yeah, I guess. Better than the last few yeah, weeks. Uh, so, our experience with Denzag, the fact that they're cheaper. Uh, the two the, presentations, um, Denzag did a much better job. I don't think there was a comparison presentation and the materials they brought with them. I know that that's not always indicative of what the results uh, turn out to be, but because we've had such a positive experience with Denzac, we have proof of the um, validity of their proposal in, in the fact that they've done such a good job with uh, accessible playground. Yeah. Well, the very first meeting we had out there, we sat out at the pavilion where we were originally going to put it and uh, Mr. and Mrs. Denzek were brought up to remember Brian, he got all the hardware out and showed the quality of all the... Um, he brought it here? Yeah, the same yeah. thing he did here. So, I mean, it, was, uh, it wasn't like he just showed it to us there and that was it. He, right. Because only myself and Kevin were out there as far as the town goes. Uh, Brian was there. Well, yeah, yeah, as far as, yeah. Not, but uh, it, it just seems like they care a little bit more about wanting to put it in. We also, uh, on this meeting, we were on a conference call with uh, uh, Mr. Denzek's uh, installer, and we went over everything, didn't we, Brian? And the, the most important part is uh, uh, Mr. Supervisor said we want that thing running by June 1st. 
and he says, I'll have it running for you. It'll be done. Uh, and he says, that's what he does for a living. So I felt very comfortable and the time that they spent going over all these aspects and with our town engineer and, and Brian and, and Adam uh, to make sure that everything's going to, to run smoothly. Mm -hmm. uh, I just, uh, I have a very good comfort level as far as uh, we went through the, the uh, playground and they kept their word and they got everything done mm -hmm. on that. Uh, and I don't think they've ever done two projects in the same town's park, I don't think. So this is going to be a real showpiece for them. So I think they have all the incentive in the world to do a really nice job. They're going to have this, the playground was a large playground for them. This right next door, I think it's, I've had a good experience, but I'm, you know, I, How does their company work? So they're based out of Texas, but yet they... That's the manufacturer, though. So they buy, they are a... Think of them as the middle. So, what's the name of Denzek's company? Is it Den? I forget the name of their company, but they sell Vortex yeah. materials but, or material uh, products. So they they're, they're sort of like the middleman. I forget the name of the company. What do you mean? Well, we bought the playground from Miracle Equipment Company, but they're the representative for Miracle and they're the representative for Vortex. They're like this. So they're trade certified. Yes. Yeah, Vortex so retailers. Scholars. Yeah. So we've got two thirds of it paid for, thanks to the county and the foundation, <coughs> and working on the rest. Um, and at the end of the What's day, the balance that we need. To well, so the, I mean, certainly there are going to be some more soft costs. Uh, there will be, and we got to consider the fence. Laura, you've mentioned the fence multiple times. We've all considered that. That's not in this proposal, and there'll be other things. Is all the concrete there, Brian? That we're going to need. I mean, in terms of sidewalk. Sidewalk would be a small additional piece that would be added. So where it goes straight up now, where it turns to the playground, it would just go straight into the splash pattern. And then if we sheet drain it, there's going to be some additional concrete that's needed to get the water from the edge of the existing pad to the biosphere. Okay, so that's not in here. Correct. Yeah. Is he working on revising that then? No, that's not part no. of his work. Well, well that would be separate. Our so that's what we have our yeah. little budget for. Just like with the yeah. playground, we had a little budget for like a contingency budget, yeah. a sort of. Yeah. So, I mean, if you take the quote in, so there will be there will be some other additional items, but let's take the quote as it is at 232. If we've got 165 already, we're roughly 35 plus 32, so 75 short. Of a 67, sorry, finance director. Yes. Um, so 67. Yeah. <laughs> plus our plus our plus whatever additional cost we have. But you're not going to be doing with Denzegs, you will not be doing any of the, they're going to do the stone and the site work. The stone and the site work for the footprint of the, the splash pad. But the additional you concrete you'd be doing. That, that or a contractor. You, we would have to get the water from the water main to the edge of the splash pad. And the electric, yeah. We'd have to get the electric from the concession stand to the edge of the splash pad. We would do the drainage from the splash pad to where it's going to end up in the ditch. And I don't know any other little things that are additional within the restoration work that they wouldn't do. And obviously the bios well we would construct. I had that all written down. Sorry. Sorry, Brian. Thank you reiterate. Additional questions from the board on it? Well, we'd like to get a decision, a resolution to get it ordered. Oh, because the pricing is on the materials is good until yeah. end of the year. Of the year. Uh, we wouldn't get it until Mar March or April, yeah. somewhere in there. Months, yeah. And then we have to have a pre construction meeting. Funding would be continued. 
continue down there. Are there any potential hang-ups with them? Yeah. Well, they sent us 5,000 extra. So. <laughs> what was the grant? What was the amount of the grant? We asked for 100. We got 80. And then they upped it to 85. Mm -hmm. With the check. Really. Or the contract arrived and said 85. Maybe it was an error, but we didn't point it out. And Wayne, are there any, any additional connections or people that you guys are working on at the moment? There might there be the potential of some additional no connections? Commitments, yeah. A few commitments? No. No commitments, okay. No portion. Okay. All right, then any, Brian, is there any way, is there a way for you to estimate about what the water and the electric service will cost? I'm working on it. You are? Okay. okay. Everybody has to be. Okay. Anything else on that? Great. Thank you, Bob. <coughs> All right, our finance director. Some reserves questions. Conditioned for that 30 additional trigger? It's just the back of the canal, or is there? Yeah, that's more like 60, I think, than the back of the canal. So we're going to have to spend about 60 or whatever it comes in. And then we'll get 30 back. And we'll get 75 percent back. That's nice. The workers' comp reserve, which is low, the highway equipment reserve. I made that note there that it looks good right now, 235, but you know, we ordered that tractor and mower in October.
completion of this cladding project. We need to get the money in there to do it. Then 102.5 to the park. And so every year I tell you the amount that you have to put in the park because you charge a fee on every building for residential and for commercial new build. It's $500 for residential, $1,000 for commercial. And the law says that fee collected on the building permit has to go to the reserve, the park and rec reserve. So that amount that has to go to the park and rec reserve is $27.5. And then I reckon spending another 75 for a total of 102.5 to park in it. Those are both from the A fund. So they would come from your fund balance from the A fund and move over. Then for the highway, I'm recommending the same as last year, 225. Did you make Brian? 225. That's a good amount. And the vehicle reserve. Generally, do ten thousand, and that's it. So we will each take <coughs> a resolution next week. Looking for separate resolutions next week to put those various amounts into those various reserves. Okay. Okay. Lisa, I'm doing it was just doing some math. So really, that would bring our building reserve up to 455. Yeah. <clears throat> Parks and Rec, when you consider the other outstanding uh, grant monies, mm -hmm. they would bring us up to 462 in Parks and Rec once we've got all of our money back. Mm -hmm. It would bring us to 459 in the highway. Of course, then we know 85 is going right back out. Right. Well, 148 is going right back out. I'm sorry, yeah, I picked the wrong job. number. Yeah. Leaves 86, so yeah. that would be minus 148. Yeah. Okay. So 311, and then 43 or so in the vehicle. Yeah. So that would really leave us with reserve balances at or above everything we have. <coughs> Yeah, I was just going to say. Yeah. What was the estimate of the planning? I'm going to say uh, 176, but I might be. Uh, I didn't bring anything. I thought it was over 300. I'd be 74 Oh, good grief. Let's see that all my brain's working today. Mm -hmm. But that was including removing the stuff over. 374. Right. Yeah. And so now they said minus 30. Minus 30. Yeah. Said minus 30 for that. Yeah. So maybe three. We'll see how those bids come in. Right. Let me just tell you, the experience with those right now in the current environment is not good. <coughs> they come in uh, a lot of, for a lot of projects higher than what you estimated. I'm sure yeah. Dave does a good job. That's no reflection. Mm -hmm. But uh, so uh, if we said 374, I, I think that 375, I think you should leave it at that for now. And that would really reduce your 455 down. Yeah. You'd be yeah. pulling a lot of that out of there. Yeah. Yeah. But it's got to be done. Well, and that can be replenished. Let that, you know, we can make that more of a focus next year. Sure. Building reserve. Yes. We can look at our, you know, the parks monies that we'll have in there after the reimbursements, and that's that's strong. And we're talking about yes, a commit to commit some monies for the spray park, but it's what a third, a quarter, a quarter of what's there. Not even less than that. Well, depending on your, how it ends up coming in yeah. with Brian's Probably 100 by the time you're through with Brian's work in the 65. Yeah. So it would be 15 to 20%. Or no, about 20%, sorry. So I think those are all strong. Is there anything on there that causes you any concern if we do those, if we make those moves? No, I, I, I pushed it a little bit. I'm an community center and the projects at the park that it'll be fine. You can see it's more than we usually do as a total, a little high. Once we get but through with the cladding and stuff, we're going to do the bathrooms up there. Right, but I, I think we're just, we're, yes, the here it comes out of the cash flow. That's cash flow is comfortable, you said? And the fund balance is very comfortable. 
obviously we own a lot of property and a lot of things, and uh, they require attention. And from, from what David said, the roofs could be booming in the future. Mm -hmm. You know, this is sort of a way, maybe a bit off topic, but maybe something that to consider. Has there been any projection on the stick and mortar value to our tax base of the Stonebriar project? <laughs> I like a, lot that. Should, a lot should go into that rec fund. The well, yeah, there will be a 500 nice, times nice 148 would be so their first plus a change. They did on their first building permit, they put up five buildings, and I'm going to get it wrong. If there were 20 units in five buildings, or maybe and 500 is included in that 27,000 that's on it. So Stonebriar's first round of paying for the $500 for each unit. So some of those buildings are three units and some are four units, if I remember. Mm -hmm. So they've already come through and paid. That's part of wow. the Wow. Um, but next year, I'm hoping they come through for the next, remember they're going to do over three years. Yeah. So for the next three years, they should be paying a big chunk into that park reserve. Yeah. It should be about 80, right? 80, 80 or take 450, 80,000. Like, yeah, 155 minutes out of the It's amazing how far that goes back when they cleared it. Yeah, I know. They've done a nice job. They have. Yeah. But as far as the stick and mortar, yes, Kevin, that, unfortunately, probably not for March 1st taxable status day. So it probably won't help us in the January 1st 2020, 2020 budget. It won't help. So for 2020, school tax bill will be the first. Okay. At least it's on the horizon. But these things, that, you know, what I think that the board should focus on here is we're going to have healthy balances and all these reserves despite some of these projects. Like the, I mean, the cladding is an enormous, um, enormous thing, but it has to be done. Good news is it's probably a 50-year siding job, right? So it lasts a long, long time. No? I heard a chuckle. Is that 50? No, I hope it lasts that long, but I'm just worried about, I mean, it's a big building, 30,000 square feet. There's yeah. always going to be something that you need. And, and as Dave said, the roof might be right, not right behind there, but it's things you always have to be considering. And before we get to that, we want to do those bathrooms. and. Yeah. But so, if we can absorb a project of that size, still maintain a healthy reserve balance, things are really, really good. I think it's, you know, because I've been looking at these numbers and planning with Lisa and things I think are, all things considered, are great. Well, we've had good stewards. Yes, yeah, for a long time. We've been paying for the last decade, 15 years. Do you remember how we talked uh, a while ago about possibly establishing a reserve for the library? When do we talk about that kind of stuff? That next year? Or well, when we get a report back, I would yeah. think. Right, things are on the, on the hold, on hold. Let me give the board a little update on that uh, because, did I email everybody about that? No. I can't remember if I did or not. Okay, so I had lunch with the mayor and with uh, Jerry last week, last Thursday. Their request from their boards was that the beginning, the start date of this project, or this study, begin in early February because Carl, I guess, or the, the director is out on paternity leave. Um, we discussed it back and forth because I, I don't know that he absolutely would have to be there to keep the project going, but at the same time, I think it's probably best if he is. The problem is, is it delays it now until after the village will have made their budgetary decisions at that point. So they won't be able to really make any decisions from a budget perspective until the 2020 year. But the towns, of course, will be well in time for us to make decisions. So that was the request, I think, from... When is their budget due? I thought it was June. Yeah, but I think they make their decisions. The mayor said it's... it's the May, yeah. So well, they might have some, because if we start February 3rd and it's about an eight-week process, that's February and March. It'll be at the tail end of that. But that's up to them, not up but to then us. But then the three municipalities making a unanimous decision on the outcome of that is, mm -hmm. I mean, look how long it took to pick some of I mean, we started this in May. So I'm not optimistic that it will impact the village's budget for next year. I'm just, maybe it will. I'd be happy to be wrong. I could easily put some money in a contingency and not label it. 
Well, that's what we did. I don't know. I don't know that. You know, a decision was made. They have a balance. Well, they have a balance. So I think a capital improvement fund or a reserve of some sort, I'm sure that'll be on the horizon or on the radar. I, I, we, I think we just have to wait. I think we've done as a as we all, uh, Hopefully that would include all three municipalities. That's exactly mm -hmm. right, yes. That have to be equal amount each and every year. With a, uh, an absolutely pre-planned set procedure for how it's going to go. That's I the plan. A reset. Oh, no, no. Oh, no, no. But we don't do it. But exactly what's going to happen with that money and how you get at the money. And yeah, that's right. So that's, but that I think has to be part of the comprehensive solution that we come up with as part of this reset of the relationship. So it's, it's going to take, it's going to take time, period. It just will. And a lot of different people, a lot of different ideas. And so it's going to take time. Good news is we're further along than we were last week, so we just keep moving. Okay? So the point is, yes, Lord, absolutely, that's on the radar, uh, but we're not, not there. Well, I don't think we do anything no. until we have something else back. Gotcha. You got the card, now I get the doors. <laughs> I've, got, I've got a point. Yeah. Okay, so that's the deal there. So we're in a waiting mode, really, until I think February 4th or 6th, I think is the first date, the first Monday in February, and that's when the, the director will be back and the study will begin. Okay. Last but not least. Yes, the museum committee. Oh, uh, Danny. Yeah, so we got an email at the whole board. Hopefully everybody saw in their email today we received a request <coughs> with regard to the committee. Uh, Don, anything you want to add to your email? Or it wasn't your email, yeah, I guess. It was email. from Kathy Getz. But. It was a cooperative email. I see. It was a Kathy, Don, Christine. Yeah. I mean, we've got four members on the committee. One of them hasn't been active in two years at least. Uh, we were hoping to get a, another appointment to fill that and hopefully to go up to five so we, if somebody can't make it, we will have four. Um, from the email, you know, you know, we've accomplished a lot in the last couple years up to, well, since we started actually, and we hope to continue. Uh, on that same note, that bean planter was installed in the barn yesterday. Uh, so it, it's there, and it's got its own corner. So, but one other thing, if I'm going to be the last one on the engine, no more pies. <laughs> <laughs> Get to me before Whatever, Tuesday afternoon, how about that? Then you won't I, mean, I tried to butter you up last week. And right. to do this. <laughs> so Those were delicious. Yeah, pie. no more pies. Okay, I'll put that in my notes. Gotcha. <laughs> but that's basically what we're looking for is more help, volunteer help, appointed help. Okay, well, so it's up to me. Well, I'm, I'm all for letting you have help. <laughs> me, me too. Uh, so, anybody else? Anybody? So, I, I mean, I think that the couple things. First of all, I mean, we don't we don't typically create positions. I mean, intentionally for people. We've never done that. I mean, I, I'm not aware of that ever being done. And when we do create a position, what we do is always advertise uh, for candidates. Oh. So we do that with everything, even unless there's an existing candidate. You know, I know that there was one member that was left out on your email from today. We have already received a request from her that she be reappointed Jan in January of this oh, year. Oh, have. Correct. I yeah. wasn't aware of that. So she obviously didn't communicate it to you. No. Well, on that same note, we don't have any... Uh, Attendance of that member, so she's useless. <laughs> right? Put it bluntly. Uh, I, I would like to have somebody that's active in it, that has an interest in doing something. Right. So. Okay. Well, I mean, we can. We'll, 
consider it as board. I suppose we, we can communicate it by email or by we can add it to another agenda. Um, or perhaps you can prevail upon the, per the other person involved that whether or not she wants to continue in her efforts. That would okay. open the position and then we would advertise. And of course, you've made a recommendation here, so we would consider that as part of it. I'm not trying to step out of line, but I didn't know the procedure. I was no, 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 it's fine. I'm just saying, anytime we have a vacancy, whether we create it or whether it happens by virtue of somebody saying, I'm not, I'm not interested again. Do we have any of those this year? No, everybody's responding yes, they want to Yeah, because we had five or six vacancies, I think. or not vacancies, but people who needed to be reappointed. So we sent out a letter, I sent it maybe a month ago, asking, are you interested in being renominated for this position? Okay. Because we don't want to... Do we have term limits? I don't think so. I'm just curious. We no, don't have a lot of board. If, I don't, you, I don't if you sent so. the letter out and said that, you must have some sort of... Well, the of library board letter. does have term limits. You can serve only two people. Oh, really? I don't, do we have I don't know what it is. Not on any of our committees. Or, okay. So, see, in my past experience on the zoning board, when my term was up, they told me I was reappointed. <laughs> they didn't ask me about yeah. it. <laughs> you did a good job, Don. <laughs> and I thought that's the way they were doing it now. Yeah. So I would suggest maybe a discussion with the other existing board member on see what her interests are and then if this is something you want us to consider again, let me know or let the board know just as you did here and then if you could, could consider making it a five, uh, I mean they're all volunteer members, uh, if you could put it up to five uh, and then we would have the option of at least maybe having four show up for a meeting. Mm -hmm. So, but there, are the, do you have any voting? I mean, there are no voting, voting rights or anything like that, right? No, no. Yeah, I mean, so, uh, if so it's they less are vital than this. We take them out behind the barn. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a good part of what? Right? Okay. Um, but no, it's just that having warm bodies to do work, so to speak. Uh, oh, I understand. Well, nothing stops people from volunteering. Either. So it must be something stops them. They don't stop. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, but that would be the practice. That way, there isn't there, there aren't there aren't allegations of collusion or favoritism or anything like that. We would advertise for it. We do that with every vacancy, right? Has that always been the practice in town? Okay. So, um, so okay, we'll wait to hear back. Hear back. Okay. Okay. All right. Anything else before the board? Nope. Yeah, that was enough. All right. Thank you, everyone.